Abu Yazid, um, some of you may not know, is a revert to Islam. He was a host on ABN's Jesus or Muhammad. He was a co-host of David Wood. And now, subhanAllah, he is back as a Muslim. So, so what happened? Um, you start to learn more about Christianity, if yeah. I recall correctly. When I when I came into Christianity, uh, I, the people I were around were uh, deeply Calvinistic, and I became deeply Calvinistic, and I began to question these that aspect because that has really has to deal with the issue of salvation. What is salvation? Um, how does one become saved? What's the difference between a saved person and a non-saved person? These type of questions, the attempts to answer these things. And so you have, you have popular ideas in Christianity, certain forms of Christianity. You know, you have concepts like once saved, always saved. Basically, it means if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your ticket is punched for eternity. You know, you are saved. You are saved forever. But there are problems with that. There are big problems with that. There's problems theologically. There's, there are biblical problems with justifying that. You know, one of the issues with that is um, lawlessness. Lawlessness, which is the idea of I don't, I don't have. There's no law over me. There's nothing that binds me. Um, I should obey God. I should obey the Bible. But that has nothing to do with my salvation. If you believe in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what you do or what you don't do. You are saved and you are saved forever. Is this is this according to a specific school of thought or is this just like um, cultural Christianity? No, that, that, these are schools of thought. OK, you OK. And it seems like the, it seems like this is quite a popular view, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, yeah. it is a very popular view. Um, it's this is part of the appeal of Christianity. Actually. Uh, and, this, and this played a role. This played a role in. in in, in your issue and, and yeah, because I you know as I began to really learn and read mm. books and read systematic theologies about these things and listen listen to different theologians I don't want to hear just one opinion I want to hear the right. opinions of the other schools of thought why would you have a Bible full of commandments not just the old the Old Testament even the New Testament is full of imperatives and commands but you're saying you're not duty bound or obligated to follow these commands. You have salvation no matter what. Um, okay, so, so you were, were you overwhelmed? I wouldn't you wouldn't say, say overwhelmed. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't say overwhelmed. It just sparked my curiosity even more. Okay. It made me want to study more. There was a, a friend of mine was a pastor who went to a seminary with me and we had a conversation about do you need to believe in the trinity in order to be to be saved and he conceded to my point that there's nothing in the bible that says a person has to believe in the trinity and he and, he, and remember he said to me you you know you're right there's nothing in the bible that says a person has to believe in the trinity to be saved even though i believe that i know it's true but i can't find the proof in the bible and I, over and over again, I, this became a pattern. Where you had these doctrines that had been crafted and designed by the church fathers and had been made canon by some particular uh, church conference or whatever uh, in the first four or five hundred years of uh, Christianity and declared uh, absolute truth within the church. And when you challenged and pushed back on it, you people had to concede that there's nothing can't really prove it in the Bible, but you have to believe in it. You just have to right. believe, or you don't have right. salvation. Right. Right. So at that, when I finally got, when I started knocking down pillars of Christianity through study, I said to myself, "Well, I don't know if I can. I can be this this whole this evangelical Calvinist Christian thing. I can't do this anymore." Um. So I had a, a friend of mine who was in seminary who was a Messianic Jew, which is basically blending Judaism and Christianity together, you know, where you, you practice the, uh, the uh, 
the holidays of the Jews and you do different the different rituals, but you believe Jesus is the Messiah. I, I, I contemplated doing that, um, seriously. And then the last doctrine that failed was the Trinity. That was hard to get oh, they, they believe in that too. Yes, so the, the, the main line may say any Jews believe in the Trinity, even though there's, there's an aspect of them that have rejected okay. the Trinity. They kind of believe in um, what's called, called adoptionism. Jesus was a prophet and the spirit of God came upon him and then he became the son of God, which was mm -hmm. one of the original doctrines of the church. The problem is these, these fundamental doctrines of Christianity are not explicitly dealt with in detail in the Bible. Understood. Everything is being extracted implicitly. Understood. You know, cobble together different verses and you come up with a particular theory. There's nothing okay. it, it, it explicitly that says Jesus is God. So after I started questioning the, uh, the Trinity, I even thought about converting to Judaism, you know, and I, I explored that. And I sat and watched a, a, a video of a rabbi and the rabbi was talking about the Noahic laws, which they believe that if a person, whether they're even not a Jew, if the person believes in one God and they have some system of uh, religious law, then they have a place in the life to come. They have salvation without being a Jew. So he said that when people, when non-Jews come to him saying, I want to be a Jew, he tells them, don't bother. Just follow the Noahic laws. Don't eat pork. Don't consume blood. Believe in one God. And have a system of righteousness wow. to follow. So from that standpoint, from the from an Orthodox Jewish standpoint, Muslims have salvation. But guess who doesn't have salvation? Christians. Christians do not have salvation. And I've told this to Christians, and I had Christians look at look me dead in the eye and say, You're lying. <laughs> not, I'm not lying. No. Uh, so, so who, an Orthodox Jew cannot even go inside of a church. Right. They can't because it's a place of idolatry. Jesus is a pagan idol in Judaism. And you have all these e evangelical Christians in, uh, in the West who are pro-Israel. It's almost become a pillar of their religion to be, to be so Zionistic and, and for Judaism. Right. And most of them do not know this, that the average Jew, a Jew can't even enter their church and they believe that Jesus is an idol and they believe that they're going to hell 